The associates were more a support ministry. Nakuru started many years ago. During my time, Nakuru was active. Oh, Machakos were still struggling, even Mombasa was struggling. The associate retreat were a place to reflect and hear the word of God and be renewed. The Focus Associates Ministry is as old as the student ministry. Its foundation dates back to the 1960s when David Kianda, the Pan-African Fellowship of Evangelical Students Traveling Secretary, initiated a process of mobilization and consolidation of a growing number of Kenyan university graduates for involvement in ministry. The associates played two roles. One of them was to meet together. There were associate fellowships to meet together to encourage one another. They are the ones who raised funds to, to pay our salaries and our rent. When we left before I left for my studies, already there are a group of um, ex, the ex-students from the University of Nairobi and from the Christian Union who had now formed a group of associates. They were, first of all, associates of Parfes. Later on, when Focus was formed, they became now associates of Focus. And they used to meet every Friday for fellowship and also for knowing what are the needs in the student work. They provided speakers to the Christian unions. That time is only the, the Christian Union at the University of Nairobi. There was one at Kabete. Then, of course, um, after 73, at Kenyatta University. And then there were some other colleges that were starting to, to have Christian unions. So there were not very many at that time. There could have been about seven or, or so. But there was big commitment. That's what I would say from the associates. You no, know, in the early years, as I have said, we had initially just one staff. The associates had to be involved. Say, for example, those who are near say University of Nairobi, the, the medical school, they had to support those students. We had open homes for them. In 1976, John Gishinga and Emmy Gishinga played a key role in the expansion of the Associates Ministry. Initially, the Associates branch idea began as a Nairobi thing. The second branch was later opened in Akuru, where we had more graduates. We also did a lot of traveling, encouraging uh, 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 associates. We used to travel uh, in different parts of this country. We had two Volkswagens. Emmy had one and I had one. We used to travel around the country encouraging the associates, going and staying in all kinds of, from the coast to the west to the north to wherever, wherever we had associates, staying a weekend with them just encouraging them and fellowshipping with them uh, in the remote places in which they were. During those early days, the biggest challenge was to get the associates outside of Nairobi organized mm -hmm. and have Bible studies together. Some of them would be sent in places where maybe there is even no church where they could fit in. That was a big challenge. We went around the country, setting up associate branches where we would encourage uh, associates in, in, in uh, various uh, town centers to be coming together for, for fellowship. Uh, of course, because of the you know, transfers of people from one place to the other, those groups uh, changed their composition. Uh, but one of the things they helped with a great deal. It's a both financial, it's actually financial support. They understood because of the benefit they themselves got when they were students that if focus work and the student work was going to be supported, they were the ones who are going to be the, the key people. And, and, that's, and that's how come that focus depends a lot more on associates than any other source of funding. Nakuru started many years ago. During my time, Nakuru was active. 
Oh, Machakos who are still struggling, even Mombasa who are struggling, but the one that was really active was Nakuru. So, they were actually yeah. more active yeah. than Nairobi. <laughs> As the associates' branches grew, the formation of professional groups became the next big idea in the associates' ministry to meet the need for a platform for career mentorship and raising awareness for transformational marketplace engagement from a missional perspective. That it was at that time that I was able to organize FASAMO. The first FASAMO meeting is me who organized it in Mombasa Beach Hotel. And that's how FASAMO was born. And it grew to be, I think, a department. But also there was a time we organized a, a meeting, an associate's retreat to go to Dar es Salaam. And we are using buses, we are using cars. I remember it was a long journey. So I got a call from Focus that look, you're not only the CU chair, you're also the regional chair, you're also the national chair. And we have a ticket for you to go to Mombasa for a retreat, for an uh, associate retreat. Yeah. You know, I was in the village. Yeah. I felt so inadequate. Yeah. But when I went for that retreat, I was so supported by Focus, by the staff, by the associates. They, they, they spoke to me, they encouraged me. And we had a, a few days, I was taught. I was taught about service. I was taught about uh, many other things. And in, in a sense, that week, I, I, I got to be confident that I can be the CU chair, I can be the regional chair, and I'm the national chair. In the early 1990s, the Lawyers Christian Fellowship and the Medical Christian Fellowship were started. At some point, I discovered that there is so much for Christians to do. Much of it was, you cannot just sit there, graduate, and go and make money. You need to be concerned about other people, about source, about society. And it is through one of the meetings that we attended as associates in Mombasa mm. that somebody challenged us with a message, we all can do something. Mm. Through that message, we founded Nakuru Christian Professionals. Mm. That organization has helped change youth by creating what is now called Center of Hope in Nakuru. Hesabika Trust was later formed in 2016, which seek to call Christian professionals to stand out and be counted in the marketplace. You could talk about um, Hesabika. When I came to focus, one of the things that was clear for me was that the, the associates who had not been mobilized enough to be able to see their, their, their calling in, in the public space. And we have the first retreat in 2015. That vision I shared, that conviction about Christians engaged a little more, was not just me. There were other people. And in that retreat, I find this team of people, uh, Dr. Joshua Wadanga and a group who are also, it's like God was speaking and saying, hey, we can do something more. So one thing leads to the other, and it was clear. So here was convergence. And then in 2016, we have this um, conference in KU that becomes bigger than we imagined. And then Hesabika was then born. As we celebrate 50 years, countless graduates pride in the support they have received from Focus Associates. Families have been strengthened, professionals have stood firm against evil in the marketplace, and what started as a small meeting has grown to a movement that continues to change nations. The mentorship I've done is that one in terms of Christian uh, fraternity, but I've also done mentorship personally, directly, for people who are in medical school, all my training, mentorship in what it is to be an appropriate uh, Christian doctor um, in your ministry, in your profession and everything. That have done it all along. One of the things that I will say for sure, that if I'm not for the salvation, I will not have stood my ground. I remember in one of the countries, and I don't want to mention, 
where we were actually asked as a CEO and the CFO to sign wrong documents because some people wanted the money and we had to refuse. And uh, telling you about, no, I can't do it because of my faith. It's not possible. And that's because of the grounded that we got in the Word of God, reading the Word of God. We've gone where even the client tell you, you want to get rich? You pay this claim and I'll give you X number. You tell, simply tell them, my salary is enough and God is enough. I've had a chance that somebody come with a gun to put on my head because I've refused to pay a fraudulent claim as a CEO. But I stood. Eventually, the man is the one who cried, it was not me. Because when he told me he has his gun and he showed me, I told him, do you know where mine is? <laughs> so what if I produce mine? <laughs> what my motivations for going to a teacher training college, I figured out what I'm doing with the students in high school. Uh, if I pass this on to somebody who is going to teach in a school, then I will have made more impact because now I am multiplying myself. Uh, so in, in the college, the number of uh, students I have in the Christian Union or in my discipleship group, uh, when I commission them, they go to places that maybe I would never have gone to in the whole of this country. When we were students, I remember there is a pastor called, um, is it, uh, he, he was calling himself a brother, Brother Nganga. And he, told, he taught us something that I never forgot and I guess I carried it through even uh, to my workplace because he said uh, first we are full-time ministers. Uh, ministers. So he was telling us the first, wherever you are, you are a minister, whether it is in your workplace and he was giving us an example of how he was uh, in uh, Toto, he's, he's in Shell. Yeah. He was in Shell and the way he started the fellowship there and he was telling us, you know, a pastor cannot come here and, and uh, preach here. So, but it's easy for me as a colleague to preach to someone. And uh, I guess that one rubbed me the right way because even when we began businesses, the first thing we would establish a fellowship because we have begun several businesses. The first thing you establish is a fellowship because you are a full-time minister. It doesn't matter where you are, you, the first calling is a, a minister of God, provided you're saved. In Kitengela, we began two businesses in Kitengela. There was a bakery and then there was a hotel. I was running the hotel, my husband was running the bakery. And then when I was in the hotel, you know, I'm, I guess I am first an evangelist. I love evangelism. So it's in, in, in my nature to evangelize to people. And uh, I started evangelizing to my workers. And then because it being a hotel, we work every day. We used to work every day because now we, we left it. We used to work every day, even Sunday. And uh, I figured out my workers cannot go to church and they have no, yani, we cannot close down because we need to make money. We have opened to make money. And Sunday was actually the busiest day. So I said, let's start a, a fellowship here. You have evangelized to them, they are, they are born again, but they do not have a pastor. So you become their pastor, you see. So we began a fellowship, just like a joke. You know, I used to do 30 minutes and then I go to church. I, 30 to one hour and then I go to church. And then it became serious. <laughs> it became serious. We got a room because now we could not operate the two together. We got a room still in the hotel. It was a big hotel, so we got a room where we would do our fellowships. It was open to anyone who wants to worship at, at whatever time when they are free. And I get, I guess there I got uh, the first bit of being a, a little bit of a pastor. A little bit of a pastor <laughs> in a sense of it because again, uh, they had no one, they had no one, and again you not give them permission, and yet they are, they are already saved. Huh? So it was only prudent that we begin a fellowship. Golfing is like, uh, for us, a mission field. Because I know together with our current chairman at Nakuru Golf Club, Engineer Kehumba, we have a location to hold carol service where everybody, including uh, of other faiths, come and we worship together. <laughs> uh, you know, we have a location where I organize 
all the caddies to come together with their children and families and I call a preacher and we come and we minister to them as they enjoy a meal. I have a location where we organize a tournament, we call it Resurrection Tournament. It is like the answer to the Lent tournament organized by Catholics. Uh, we organize one as Protestants. Uh, and uh, in that event, when you are the sponsor, you have an opportunity to preach, to do whatever you want. And uh, we have had occasion to do that over the years. And many of the speakers for me has been focused associates. Omondi Siwa, Mr. Birgen, have been the speakers. It may never be a long session, but the little small session that you are able to minister may be the only time many of the gophers here get to hear the gospel. As we celebrate 50 years, we appreciate Focus Associates for their selfless giving in the ministry. The universities and colleges have continually increased and subsequently enlarged the fields and the readiness for the harvest. We still need more workers who will be counted in the next phase of Focus Ministry. Focus has a big responsibility to bring people in terms of thinking, Christian thinking, how it's going to address those issues. Um, so I would say there are social challenges which have become also academic challenges that have been to be dealt with. So for associates, the student ministry should be a priority. It's a mandate for them to be involved in student ministry. It's an area that uh, by being involved, they advance the cause of Christ. You can join us today by visiting www.focuskenya.org slash plugin and choose your preferred way of involvement. Happy 50th anniversary, Focus Kenya! Celebrating 50 years of changing nations.